Hi, I'm Dan Ray with IT Security Guru. Today, talking to security researcher Troy Hunt, who's in Australia. Good morning, Troy. G'day, Dan. Good evening. Good evening to you. It's, uh, yeah, different time zones here. Um, we're here today. It's uh, the day after Australia Day. We're going to talk about your the website you launched. Um, was it in December called HaveIBeenOwned.com? Yeah, early December. Okay. So at the moment, we, we just said you've got uh, nine um, websites who have uh, had significant breaches um, over the last couple of years, and 160 million, or more than 160 million uh, at the time of recording. Who knows what will happen this week? Um, details on that. Just tell a bit of a run through on how actually, you know, how this works and where you're getting this data from, how it, it's being um, kind of correlated against people's addresses. Sure, Dan. Well, uh, first of all, all of the data that's on there at the moment has been um, obviously illegally breached in one way or another and then uh, unfortunately dumped into the public domain. So, you know, Adobe is the big one. Adobe's probably hopefully going to be the biggest one for a long time. Mm. When that all broke in about October last year, uh, unfortunately, all of those accounts were, were dumped and torrented and easily discoverable anywhere. So, at that time, uh, often I would do research on password reuse and uh, sort of the, the patterns across breaches, and I was finding the same individuals kept appearing breach after breach at the same email addresses, uh, and as per some of my writing, inevitably the same passwords as well. So I thought it would be interesting to create a site that actually started aggregating the breaches and saying, okay, let's go in and see where you've been breached. And we're seeing people pop up now on multiple different breaches and inevitably over time when we see more big ones and I, I suspect that uh, over the period of the years Adobe won't be the biggest forever mm. uh, this will sort of keep tracking that where that information is available and people will be able to go in and, and sort of um, see where their risk is. Absolutely, I've um, tried uh a number of my email addresses that I've generated over the years um, and I'm very thankful to say I'm such a good as I say this uh, that none of mine um, were, were owned but are you, were you finding a lot of, of people come to you saying that you know I've got sometimes got two or three uh, email addresses have yeah. been have been hit because of these breaches yeah and, and you know I had actually I had two or three in Adobe alone in fact I had email addresses I've forgotten about uh, so yeah. there's stuff that goes back a long way in fact uh my personal one and my current work one were both in the breach, which didn't surprise me too much. But actually, as I was going through doing some of the analysis, I found another one that I'd used some years ago. So I am finding that and we're, uh, we're seeing you know, a fairly high prevalence of people actually getting a, a successful hit on their account searches. I don't track that explicitly in the database, so I've got to rely on things like the number of success results from the underlying table storage, but we're seeing somewhere in the order of about 25% of the accounts that were searched for uh, were actually turning up in one of the breaches, mm. which you know, in my mind is, is actually a fairly significant number. I was going to say, and also, you know, you've got a number of websites that I saw that you've chosen not to put the data on there. Um, why was that? I noticed one of them was LinkedIn. Of course, that was because it was encrypted data, wasn't it? Well, it's, so there's got to be a couple of um, conditions that get met. And, and the first is it's got to have something I could actually use. Mm. So for LinkedIn, LinkedIn leaked uh, unsalted SHA-1 passwords, but it didn't leak anything else to go with it. Uh, so, you know, we don't have um, email addresses. We don't have usernames. Now, I could put those unsalted SHA-1 hashes in there and say, could you please enter your password and I'll hash it and I'll check it. But, you know, I, don't, I wouldn't put my password into a site like that. I'm not going to ask other people to do it either. Yeah, fair enough. And just one more question. You know, you, you've obviously got like 100, more than 160 million accounts on there. Let's say there's another huge account, um, a huge attack this week. You know, we've already seen, I think it was 70 million from Target uh, so far this year in 2014. Uh, you know, could, do you think you could, could get up to a billion one day? Is, is it that possible that you think that breaches could actually be that prevalent and that huge that, you know, you could actually be looking at a significantly more number of accounts detailed uh, added to this website? Yeah, in fact, I was doing the numbers this morning because someone asked me, they said, um, you know, if, if we get a lot of breaches, can, can you fit the data? And mm. the, the, the Windows Azure platform that's sitting on the table storage, I'm using about t uh, 20 gigabytes of data uh, and I can put 200 terabytes in there. So, mm. <laughs> so I don't expect that there will be that extent of breaches, but I do expect that we'll have um, many, many more. And what I'm trying to do at the moment, part of the reason there's only nine breaches in there, and clearly there have been many, many more publicly right. released, is I'm trying to get this process of how we get data in uh, well refined because you know, unsurprisingly, it's actually not easy getting 152 million rows in there and something like Adobe uh, gets dropped. You know, we want to be able to get the data in, get it in there quickly. 
can also get things like the notifications sent off to people that have, have subscribed to it. Um, yeah. So the, the facility is definitely there, and I expect we'll see more big dumps, and I want to make sure the system behaves well when that happens. Well, I guess yeah, that's the thing is you know it's it's there as a as a tool for people to use to know what when something's gone wrong and uh, you know hopefully you know no matter how many details there are it's you know they say it's still the same email addresses over and over again so it's uh, hopefully it's an awareness project for people on how how secure to get you know how, how much uh, how many things they've signed up for I suppose. It is, and I, I, you know, look. I mean, we're security professionals. You probably speak to an audience of security professionals as well. I think one of the things we forget is that for a lot of people, this this is sort of shocking news. They're like, "Hang on a moment." People go in and breach accounts and, and mm. release it publicly, and the fact that they can find themselves in something like Adobe, which obviously has a, a great number of people and many people who are not in the security field, I think that brings an awareness to people that is far more valuable than simply the fact of I put a couple of email addresses on uh, on a website. Absolutely, yeah. Well, look, all the best with the website, Troy. And, you know, we'll we'll keep an eye on you know any huge breaches that come up. Hopefully, there won't be that many. But you know, it'd be interesting to see see how they correlate with uh, existing uh, email addresses as well. And also, you know, maybe see how many of those email addresses are actually on so many bre uh, databases as well. So uh, it's a, a really good tool for the industry. So thanks for your time and thanks for the for the effort. No worries, and I think if uh, the start of 2014, if there's anything to go by, I might start taking some more chunks out of that 200 terabytes, actually. <laughs> right, I see, yeah. All right, you have a good day. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Dan. Okay.